Hi everyone, I'm Winnie C, your host for today's webinar, Seven Steps to Successful Investing. The presenter is Rick Convey, President and Chief Investment Officer for Asthma Wealth Management and Trust. We have about 30 minutes of slides in this presentation. Should you have any questions, please email us at wealthmanagement at asthma.com. This monthly webinar series is brought to you by Asthma Wealth Management and Trust. We are Asthma's trust company. Asthma stands for American Armed Forces Mutual Aid Association, and is the longest standing not-for-profit association that empowers military families with affordable financial solutions. We accomplish this by being the premier provider of financial planning, investment management, and trust services for the military not-for-profit. Also, as a trust company, we have an additional legal obligation to act as your fiduciary, which means we only act in your best interest and for your benefit. Here's an important disclaimer. This presentation is educational. It is for general information only and it's not specific investment, legal, or tax advice for any of you individually. Do not rely on this presentation alone to guide your financial planning decisions. Since each individual situation is unique, your needs for financial services will differ. For individual advice, please contact us directly. We produce this webinar series in-house with our own professional staff as a service to our members and to help them better understand resources that are available to them. I will now turn it over to Rick to go over the agenda and start the presentation. Thanks, Winnie. Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Convey, the President and Chief Investment Officer of Asthma Wealth Management and Trust. To give you a little bit of my background, I have been in the investment management business for over 35 years now beginning as a securities regulator up on Wall Street, and then moving over to the investment management side. During those years, I have noticed that individual investors in general have not been very successful long-term investors. The individual investor tends to make emotionally driven investment decisions. Their portfolios tend to drift in and out of different asset allocations due to either neglect or emotions or for simply having no clear goal in mind for their portfolios. I have seen numerous studies that have proven this. So what is the secret of becoming a successful investor? Actually, it's not that difficult. From the experience that I have gathered over many years of investing in the market, including numerous corrections, bull markets, bear markets, economic up and down cycles, I have boiled it down to these seven steps that you see on the screen. Step one, develop a plan. Step two, look long term. Three, diversify your investments. Step four, go global. Five, know your costs. Step six, rebalance. And finally, step seven, be tax efficient. Now let's take a more detailed look at each one of these steps. First one, develop a plan, an investment plan, a written plan that codifies the purpose of the portfolio, the asset allocation, your tolerance for risk, your liquidity needs, portfolio taxation, and any special requirements. At Asthma Wealth Management Trust, we call this the Investment Policy Statement, or IPS. When you're looking at developing the plan, 
Is the purpose of the portfolio to generate income, to maintain your living standards, or is its purpose directed more towards growth, either for a planned future event, such as, uh, let's say, retirement, or to pass along to a future generation, which we see many times? The answer will help determine your overall asset allocation towards bonds or stocks, and even to the types of stocks. For example, more dividend paying, but also slower growing stocks, or high growth, but no dividend paying equities. What is your time horizon for the portfolio? Longer time periods can afford to be more aggressive. And why? Because they have more time to recover from any short-term disruptions. What is your tolerance for risk? You may have a long-term time horizon, meaning you can be more aggressive, but if you can't sleep at night because your portfolio just lost 5 or 10% of its value, then that more aggressive allocation may not be right for you. Do you need a high or low level of liquidity? Do you have a safety account somewhere? You do not want to be forced to sell during the period of market disruptions. Give you an example. A portfolio with a purpose of purchasing a home, let's say two years from now, should not be in the stock market. You have no idea what the market's going to do during that two-year period. Is the portfolio separate to current taxation, or is taxation deferred to a future period, such as a traditional IRA? This impacts the type of investments and your turnover rates. Do you have any special requirements, such as uh, no tobacco stocks? All of these factors need to be carefully considered to determine the portfolio that is right for you. As I mentioned, step two of going long term. Why do you need a plan and why should you write it down? To help you minimize emotional decisions. This chart shows the market since 1950 and just some of the major events that occurred during that time. We haven't updated it yet for the events of 2017. But let's look at some recent events. One of the major ones was Brexit. Remember when Britain was voting to leave the EU? That's a recent example. Investors expected one result and got exactly the opposite. They panicked, dropping our domestic market by about 6%, in the international markets by up to 10% in just two days, that Friday and that Monday. Then markets turned around and recovered all and then even some extra over the next two weeks. What you can see from this chart and all the different events is to remember there will always be reasons not to invest. There will be always be something hitting the fan somewhere or somehow. What is important is to follow your plan. Look at this chart again. I have circled two what I consider significant periods, 1987 and 2008, 2009. Do you remember 1987? I do. It's hard to read on this chart, but I remember that the market dropped by about one third in a matter of days. That would be like the Dow dropping more than 7,000 points at today's level. Can you imagine the, the reaction of investors? But when you look at 1987 on this chart, it hardly registers at all. 2008, 2009, during that time period, we had almost a 50% decline. Those who let their emotions drive their investment decisions, they probably sold. In both cases, as you can see, that was a bad decision. As I mentioned again, the long term, and I want to show you just one other chart for that. This chart goes back all the way to 1900, and in it you can see a number of P's and T's, Peters and Tom's, and they stand for peak and trough of different market cycles. The blue shaded areas are recessions. What this chart is illustrating is the large number of either corrections, bear markets, or recessions that have occurred over this time period. 
A correction, which is defined as 10% or more, has occurred 20 times during this time period, or an average of about every six years. So 10% decline every six years. A bear market declines of over 20% occurred 17 times, or an average of about once every seven years. Recessions, as you can see, occurred 23 times, or about five years on average. Put it all together, and the market was in a bull run, an upward trend, only about 63% of the time, and was experiencing either a correction, a bear market, or a recession about 37% of the time. So, excuse me, not 37%, 44% of the time. So, if you only focus in on the short term, what we would call market noise, you will take investment actions that will damage your long-term success. The next step, step three, diversify your investments. Done correctly, you can reduce your risk without damaging your returns or increase your return at the same level of risk. This chart is an example of the benefits of diversification. The horizontal gauge measures risk, which we define as volatility of returns for the standard deviation. And the vertical gauge is the return on one dollar invested in December of 1990. So we took a period here from December of 1990 through June of 2017. So one dollar invested in December 1990 in just large cap domestic stocks, that's where it says large caps with the two blue lines cross, became $13.42 by June of 2017. I then put in nine different portfolios diversified across different asset classes such as bonds, small stocks, mid-sized stocks, real estate investment trusts, etc. on that graph one through nine. Notice portfolio one, which is a mix of those different asset classes, returned the same $13.42, the same return, as a portfolio of just large cap domestic stocks. But notice on the vertical gauge, it did that with 18% less risk, less volatility of returns. While the risk in portfolio number nine at the other end of the spectrum, with again a different asset mix, had the same risk, the same volatility as that large stock, large domestic stock portfolio, but instead of ending with $13.42, you ended up with $16.32, a significant increase in your return with the same level of risk. More return, same level of risk. So what this chart shows is that diversification works. Step four, go global. What I have noticed during my years in the investment field, individual investors tend to limit their investment horizon by concentrating on their own domestic market. I've seen this. U.S. investors invest U.S. market. European investors, European market, etc. We believe this is a mistake. This chart with the three circles illustrates the total market capitalization of the world's equity markets over basically the last 10 years, going from 2016 back to 2006. As you can see from the blue portion of these circles, which is the United States, the U.S. market has fluctu fluctuated from a, around a low of about one-third in 2011 to almost 40% today of this world market. This means that if you only invested domestically, you are ignoring about 60% of the world's investment opportunities. Notice the returns, which is the bottom part of that chart over those 10 years. The returns of the world index were compatible, and it did about 3.31% annualized during those 10 year time periods. And that's comparable to the United States, which did about 3.41% for the same time period. So the returns are very similar. But the benefit of a globalized portfolio 
is in that diversification that we talked about in the previous slide. You've got more diverse, diversification, less risk, same type of return. The next step, step five, is to know your costs. Seems to be obvious, but many times I've heard people tell me, I'm not paying anything in my brokerage account or uh, in some other account, or they're paying something that they had no idea what their costs were. All portfolios have some costs involved in their creation and ongoing management. You have heard many times, either in the paper, articles in the paper, from other presentations, that it's important to minimize your portfolio expenses. I don't quite agree with that. To me, what is important is to know your costs and are you getting value for your money. Some costs are transparent and easily determined, but many are not. Asset-based fees, such as charged by investment management, RAAs, trust companies, etc., can be determined just by looking at your statements, so they're very transparent. But embedded fees within investment products, especially proprietary products, are not so easy to determine and will require you to do some research and to question your investment advisor. It's important to know what you're paying. Back one, please. Here's the next step, rebalancing to maintain your target asset allocation. I consider rebalancing to be one of the most critical components of long-term investment success. Portfolios are not fire and forget. You need to monitor and you need to take action, not when your emotions tell you to, but when the guidelines determined by your investment plan, remember step one, are violated. This chart shows the impact of just two types of rebalancing methodologies, periodic and percentage-based. And again, we took a 15-year time period ending in June 2017. The initial portfolio was set with a target, as you can see off the left-hand side, with a target asset allocation of 60% stocks and 40% bonds. The periodic portfolio is balanced once per year. Some, some managers do it you know, annually, some do it quarterly, but we set this one for once per year while the percentage portfolio is rebalanced whenever either the stock or bond portion of the portfolio exceeded 5% or, or was less than 5% of the target asset allocation. And you can see the results, the growth of the, those portfolios over time. With no rebalancing, a portfolio that started at $100 grew to about $277. You can see that in the upper right-hand side uh, during this time period. The portfolio with an annual rebalancing grew to about $285. And the percentage portfolio grew to about $305. So a significant increase over no rebalancing. A disciplined rebalancing methodology, and again, I repeat, discipline, forces you to sell a portion of what is working and purchase more of what is not. Over time, this discipline can significantly boost your returns. The final step here, again, is to be tax efficient. As I like to say, it is not what you make that is important, for what you keep. Long-term gains are preferable over short-term gains. Why? Obviously, prefer preferential tax treatment. So a lot of churning within a portfolio is damaging from a tax standpoint. If you have unrealized losses, a program where you tax of tax harvesting can be very beneficial. And what that is, is obviously in a taxable account, you sell your positions that have unrealized losses, realize those losses, take those proceeds, put it into a comparable investment, not the same because of wash sale rules, and over time, you keep your portfolio in the same asset allocation, but much more efficient. Then I give you an example. In this example, I took a $1,000 investment 
that had grown over time, it didn't matter what the time period is, except it was long term, it grown to $5,000. So you had an unrealized gain of $4,000. Then we sold it using a 20% capital gains rate. That means you're going to have to give Uncle Sam $800, and you have net after that about $4,200 left over. Then look at the chart to the right. That $4,200 if you wanted to get back to that original investment, would have to grow by 21% in just a year to get back to that $5,000 level. Over, that box then shows you what occurs over the next 10 years. That $5,000 investment grows to almost $13,000, 12969 while the investment after that one tax hit, that one time, grew to about uh, not quite 10,900, 10,894. So you can see that's a big difference just due to that one tax event. And the reason is obvious that $800 that you gave to Uncle Sam is no longer earning that return. In this case, we assumed a 10% annual return. So if you have a lot of transactions, especially short term, and you're paying out a lot in taxes, it will significantly reduce your long-term returns. I hope that these seven steps that I have illustrated will help you to become a successful long-term investor. It is not difficult. You can see that seems to be rather obvious. But it does take discipline, and it does take a plan, especially a written plan. And the reason I say that is when the market starts to have its corrections, which it always will, you can go back to your plan and it, read it, and it helps you overcome your emotions. We at Apple Wealth Management Trust do this for all of our clients. We develop a plan. As I mentioned, we call it our investment policy statement. We diversify our portfolios. We use percentage-based rebalancing. We use institutional level mutual funds and exchange traded funds to construct the portfolios to keep expenses within line. We minimize our transactions and we use tax loss harvesting when appropriate. If you are unsure if you are on the right track and would like a second opinion, we are here to help call or email, you can see the email address right there on your screen, to arrange for a complimentary portfolio review. We are here to help. With that, I'll turn it back over to Winnie. Thanks, Rick. If you have any questions regarding any of the material Rick covered, please reach out to us at wealthmanagement at asthma.com. Also, Take note of Rick's direct contact information on your screen. We'll break here for now, but you can reach us whenever you need to. Please do not hesitate to ask for help. This is what we do, and we love it. You can sign up for future webinars or review past webinars at wealth.asthma.com. If you found this information useful, please share it with your friends and family. Our membership grows stronger every year because you introduced your friends to asthma. We hope you join us again in September for our next webinar. Thank you. Have a great day.